Welcome again friends. So continuing with the series on quadratic equation in this session and uh, subsequent few more sessions we are going to discuss now methods of solving a quadratic equation. Methods right. So we had so far seen what is quadratic equation and uh, what is meant by solution to quadratic equation. Now we are, we are going to learn methods of solving a quadratic equation. Now there are you know uh, lots of studies on the different methods of solving the methods which we are going to take up today uh, are a um, solving by factorization solving by factorization this is one of the methods we'll study in detail then we have solving solving by completing the square method completing the square method don't worry we are going to discuss everything at length then third one is solving by solving by sridharacharya's formula sridharacharya's sridharacharya's method so sridharacharya happens to be a indian mathematician who had somewhere in around 600-700 um, or rather uh, 8th century AD, he has given one method. Then I'm not very sure about the dates though, so don't take the dates, but he was an Indian mathematician who has given uh, a method. So solving by Sridhacharya's method we'll learn. And then there is um, uh, one more and that is nothing but quadratic formula quadratic formula however all these methods are quite similar to each other one leads to the other so very mind you know not much of a difference is there but then we it is um, you know important to know these methods separately so today let's start with solving by factorization method okay so what is that so let us take a quadratic equation a x square plus b x plus c equals zero so we are studying here factorization method factorization method right so we are going to try to factorize the given polynomial on the left left hand side this one and then see how to solve it right so factorization method so hence let us say if we could factorize px which is equal to ax square plus bx plus c now we have learned a lot of factorization techniques in previous grades so we will be adopting one of them uh, there also there is something called completing the square then splitting the middle term using algebraic identities whichever way you can you, you factorize it and then convert this quadratic polynomial into two linear factors let's say px plus q and rx plus s okay this let's say we convert a quadratic a quadratic polynomial can have at max two linear factors and then let us equate it to zero now if you see here if you pay attention on this part two linear factors product is zero how is that possible only when either either of them is zero so either px plus q equals to zero or or rx plus s equals zero right if either of these conditions are fulfilled then the given quadratic equation or uh, this this will hold isn't it so that means if you now this is a simple linear equation which which means x equals minus q upon p will be one of the solution or x equals to minus s upon r so hence these two become the solution right these two become the solution so let us take an example and understand let us say we have x square plus 6x plus 5 equals 0 this is an example we are going to solve this quadratic equation now if you see on the left hand side we have a quadratic polynomial and there are three terms so we know a very common method of uh, factorizing it which is called splitting the middle term so we split the middle term those who do not know splitting the middle term method are advised to go through our previous uh, lectures on factorization but nonetheless we'll also try and uh, you know repeat the process so how is 
splitting the middle term work how does it work so basically what you need to need to do is let us say you have ax square plus bx plus c this is the polynomial okay so what you need to do is you multiply a with c okay a with c so hence you when you multiply a with c so and then next step is you have to split this b into two let us say b1 plus b2 so you have to do this split b into two parts such that b1 plus b2 is equal to b okay now b1 and b2 can be negative both negative both positive one negative one positive right whichever way you have to split this into two parts b1 and b2 which is and sum is b such that b1 and b2 product is equal to ac this is what is the crux of splitting the middle term right so hence we say so b is split into two terms b1 and b2 and hence it is called splitting the middle term let us see how we work here so basically here b is equal to 6 so you have to you know break 6 in two parts such that the product of those parts will be nothing but here there is 1 so 1 times 5 is ac so 1 times 5 so we have to break b into b1 plus b2 should be equal to 6 such that b1 b2 is equal to 1 into 5 which is 5 clearly if you see you don't need to break your head onto this and clearly if you see b1 if you write b1 as 1 and b2 as 5 just by trial and error itself you can get the solution so hence i can split my polynomial like this x plus 5x now if you see x plus 5x is 6x and then plus 5 equals 0 correct so if you now see it is you can take x common now from the first two terms it will become x plus 1 and then take 5 common from the other two terms it will become x plus 1 again this is equals 0 and now from these two terms here you can take x plus 1 common because x plus 1 is in both and this is reduced to x1 plus x plus 1 plus x plus 1 times x plus 5 equals to 0 now we have two factors here 1 and 2 so these two product is 0 only when either x plus 1 is 0 or x plus 5 is 0 or both of them right so hence x equals to minus 1 from here or x equals to minus 5 so x equals to minus 1 and x equals to minus 5 is the solution let's check whether it is true so we know how to check whether this extra x equals to minus 1 is a solution or not put it back into the equation and see whether the lhs is equal to rhs so we had the equation x square plus 6x plus 5 equals 0 isn't it let's put x equals to minus 1 so what are we doing we are doing check checking whether the solution is correct or not so minus 1 whole square plus 6 times minus 1 plus 5 which is clearly equal to 0 equal to rhs so hence minus 1 is correct solution similarly for minus 5 x equals to minus 5 let's check so minus 5 square plus 6 times minus 5 plus 5 is nothing but 25 minus 30 plus 5 which is again equal to 0 is equal to rhs so hence both our solutions are correct x equals to minus 1 as well as x equals to minus 5 let's take one more example we can take this equation 9x square minus 3x minus 2 equals 0 so clearly here a is 9 c is minus 2 so ac becomes minus 18 and b is minus 3 so we have to split b in such a way so that b1 plus b2 is minus 3 and b1 b2 is minus 18 okay so it is always advisable to factorize b1 b2 or ac so minus 18 is nothing but if you see it is minus 2 into 3 into 3 right now one combination of this only two combinations rather will give you b1 and b2 so if you see it can be written as minus 6 into 3 right and minus 6 plus 3 is clearly minus 3 so hence we got our b1 and b2 so minus b1 minus and b2 are there right so hence 9x square can be split and sorry minus 3x can be split as minus 6x plus 3x minus 2 equals to 0 where did i get minus 6 from here and where did i get 3 from here so this is the these are the two split terms 
so now you can take what 3x common from the you know first two terms and it is left with 3x minus 2 and again if you see this is 1 times 3x minus 2 equals 0 so 3x minus 2 times 3x plus 1 equals 0 so again by the logic that either of the factors must be 0 so 3x minus 2 is 0 or 3x plus 1 equals 0 that means x is equal to 2 upon 3 or x equals minus 1 upon 3 so this is the solution for the given given equation so understood what did we do we took a uh, equation and then we you know tried to factorize it and uh, then uh, we equated to zero each term must be equated to the equated to zero and hence finally you got the solution okay we'll take up more problems in next session